Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt called Chain Links. It's from Me and My Sister Designs and it's a jelly roll pattern. And I've picked one out that I think will look good. This is called Shades of the Season from Robert Kaufman. And there's 40 strips in here, which is perfect because that's what the pattern requires. And the only other thing we need to get started is a background and I'm going to use this nice solid bone. Let's get these laid out and see what they look like. We've got some florals. We've got some leafy prints here. Lots of pretty fall colors. Butterflies, plaids. There's something I'd like to point out about the fabric choices in the quilt here. They weren't afraid to use these prints that are pretty light against that light background. And I normally shy away from that. I normally want a lot of contrast for all my prints against the background. But this quilt turned out so nice that I'm going to go ahead and use all of these light prints. I'm going to do the sub cutting and I can't give you all the sizes because it's not my pattern. But me and my sister's designs quilts, their instructions are very, very easy to follow. <laughs> All of the cutting is done. The jelly roll pieces are collected in groups of six. So there's six of the same fabric in a stack. I need four different colors here. So let's do a rust one and a green one. And then we've got a brown one and a gold one. And we need 21 of these squares and three of these rectangles. And we're gonna take them to the sewing machine. We're going to make an entire row of chain links and that's why we brought so many pieces over. Start with a jelly roll piece and one of the squares. Then add another jelly roll piece, a matching one. Add another square. Then move on to another color. So we'll use this green one here. And I'm going to keep adding jelly roll pieces and squares so they're alternated the whole way down, two at a time, two of each color each time. got this big long row here. Let's lay it on the table so you can see what it looks like. Two jelly rolls of that one, two of that, two of that, and we've got those squares in between them all. I'm going to go ahead and make two more rows exactly like this. Both those rows are done. So all three are exactly the same. And before I move on, I'm going to finger press the seam allowances. I'm gonna press all of them toward the dark color. And you could certainly do this at your machine as you go, or you can take the rows to your ironing board. Either way works just fine. Everything is nice and flat, and here is how we get our chain links. We're going to slide this down so that this square is right in the middle. So everywhere along here, that square is right in the middle. And if you look, you can see these squares with the little interlocking chains. And the way we're going to finish off the rows so they're all the same length, remember these three pieces, these little rectangles? We're going to put two down here and one all the way down here. And then we just have to sew all the rows together. 
Okay, I've stitched on those extra three little pieces. And now all the rows are exactly the same size. And what's cool about this is that we don't have to match any intersections when we sew these together. So there's all these seams, but nothing has to match up. That makes it easy to sew, but you do want to make sure that you don't stretch anything. So I'm going to put these two rows right sides together, and then I'm going to add some pins. I'm going to start up here, and I'm going to pin it about every 18 inches or so. You can put more pins in if you feel like you need more, but basically if you match the top, match the bottom, and then put a couple more pins in, that will keep everything in place while you sew it. I always take the pins out before I start sewing at the top here. So if you sew a little bit and then find where your next pin was, which is here, and then pinch it and then just pull it toward you a little bit, that will keep everything from stretching. And that's what I do on these long, long seams to make sure everything lays nice and flat. When you put the third row on, even though we're not matching any intersections, we do want all of these lines to line up. So I'm going to set this on here and I'm going to put pins in and I'm just going to be careful that this seam here is right where that seam allowance is there. And that way everything will look nice and lined up. Okay, that is all ironed nice and flat. And we just need to make 10 of these chain link units. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab four sets of sixes here, along with the squares, and stitch all of those up. All of the chain link rows are stitched up, and let me show you how we're going to lay them out. It's very easy. Each row is exactly the same, but when we lay the quilt out, we're going to turn every other one upside down. So this one will stay like this, and the next one will get turned, and I'm leaving a little space between each row. That's because we're going to take these pieces that we haven't used at all yet, and we're going to put them between each one of these rows. But before we can put them between the rows, we need to stitch them into one really, really long piece. I'm just stitching about three quarters of an inch from the edge here. And then I'm going to trim off that extra selvage there so we have a quarter inch left. I'm going to trim a little bit off of this first piece here. So I'd like to fold it over onto itself and then cut right along that fold because it gives me a nice straight edge and it's a 90 degree cut. Now I'll pull this over till I've got the first strip on my ironing board. Steam press it nice and flat and then just trim this seam allowance. So there's about a quarter of an inch left and iron that down. And I'm just gonna keep pulling this over, ironing and trimming till I've got the whole thing flat and trimmed. Once that's in one long piece, you have choices here. You can either measure how long this strip is or you can just spread this out on top of one of these, smooth it out. And again, I'm gonna fold it over here so it's exactly the same length. And I'm gonna cut it so, the, so that it's even with the end there. And then I'm gonna use this to make 12 more strips all exactly that length. And those are gonna go between all of these patchwork strips on the top and bottom. When that's all stitched together, I'm gonna to put this on each side, then I can get it loaded up onto the quilting machine. The quilt is all loaded on the machine, 
and we need to pick a thread color. I do want to stick with these nice autumn shades here, and I think any of these could look really nice. The green is a little bit dark. That will show for sure in the light areas. Also this rusty color, that will show. This is a deep gold, so it's going to show less in the light areas, not at all in the dark. And here is a light gold. So in the background, it's still going to show nicely, but I don't think we're going to see it in the patchwork. So I think that's going to be the best choice. For the quilting, I'm going to use leaves. I love this pattern called dancing leaves. I like the little leaves. I like the big ones with that detail in the middle. And I love that outside edge. The chain links quilt is all done and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I really like that you can see the links of the chain all interlocking all throughout the whole quilt. I also like the fact that those light strips that we used really do look good. There's plenty of contrast between these and the background. Now the quilting, we did the dancing leaves, a lot of detail there, those big leaves, those little leaves, and on the back side, here you can really see that quilting and that makes it really look good when you flip the quilt over. I like to have something interesting like that on the back side. It turned out 72 by 84 and the pattern only has instructions for this one size, but it's very easy to make it larger. We used 40 strips, all 40 from a jelly roll to make this, but you could add more strips and more background and easily make a larger size or not use the whole roll and make a smaller size. There's one more thing I wanted to mention. Every time I make a pattern from me and my sister designs, I'm reminded of the first pattern I made of theirs, which was called Frog Patch. There's these really cute frogs you can make. You can pose them, you can make them sit up, you can lay them down, and they can be made with your extra patchwork. These ones are just made with one fabric. This has a few patches, but every time we make these, and I've made about 50, People see them and we give them away to the grandkids, we give them to friends. And so I thought I would mention these to you because you might want to make some frogs of your own with some of your extra patchwork. We have a video that shows exactly how to make them and I'll put a link right below the description for this video so that you can watch that and make some for yourself. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer. Now at the end of every video, we do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is a quilt and it's called Lady Baltimore. And I think I've got it sideways. Let's turn it around. This was made using a layer cake from Moda called Fresh as a Daisy. And it's got all these beautiful colors and flowers in it. We have a video that shows you how to make it if you want to make one for yourself. But today you can win this one and it's very easy to answer. To enter, all you have to do is click the link right below the video and put in your name and your email address and we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.